I made a gaming mouse completely from scratch because gaming mouse manufacturers don't care that their switches keep dying. Now I used to use the Logitech G203, but like every six months I have to replace the switches because they stop working right. And after a few replacements, I have to buy a whole new mouse. I'm on my third G203 and at this point I feel like Logitech just doesn't care. I can do better than this. Literally, I made my own mouse that doesn't have this problem. It uses an RP2040, which is the chip in the Raspberry Pi Pico, and a salvaged PixArt PMW3360 sensor. This is one of the easiest to find good mouse sensors in the world. If you're a gamer, you've probably used it before. The rest of the mouse is completely custom. I even made my own PCB and 3D printed case. It works and it's great. This is all completely open source, so if you're curious, please check the links in the description. So inside of a normal mouse, the switches are hooked up to a microcontroller with two connections, and when the switch is clicked, the two connections are shorted together inside the switch. But when the switches start to wear out, they start to do something called a bounce, where they rapidly turn on and off for a moment when you click them. The firmware in the mouse has to filter out the bouncing, but the more they filter it, the more latency or lag they add, so they try to do as little filtering as possible, and that's the problem. I know what you're thinking, you can just lock the switch's state for a few milliseconds after it changes, but switches also get a problem called chatter. Chatter means if you're holding the switch down, it can randomly turn off for a split second for no reason, so you still need the filtering. There's also electrical reasons why this problem is so much worse than it used to be, but I'll link a video about that in the description. Thing is, these switches can actually have three connections on them. If you do that, you get three states on, off, and middle. Okay, technically it's four states, but one of them only happens if the switch is like hit with lightning or something. As it turns out, chatter only makes switches go to the middle state, not the opposite state. So you can use an algorithm that adds zero latency by treating the middle state like whatever the previous state was, and then doing that state latch debouncing thing. You're technically not supposed to use the off pin on the cheap Chinese Omron switches that most mice use, but it still works, because this algorithm will block out chatter even if the electromechanical stuff going on is trash. When I started actually designing things, can you guess what the first roadblock I ran into was? That's right, they don't sell mouse sensors, not even on Digikey or Mouser or whatever. The only way you can get plain sensors is to buy them from scalpers on AliExpress, or custom breakout boards that cost 10 times what the sensor costs for manual labor reasons. So I had to figure out how to salvage a good sensor from existing mice. I decided to salvage a PixArt PMW3360 because it's a really, really common gaming mouse sensor, so even someone living in a low-income country should be able to find one somewhere. And it's also good enough to not have any obvious problems like low tracking speed or really bad surface compatibility. I actually prefer Logitech's Hero or Mercury sensor, but they're not common enough and they don't sell them either. When actually salvaging it, desoldering the PMW3360 is a nightmare. You need a hot air rework station for this. A soldering iron is just not going to work. The ground pin will not come unsoldered. With hot air, the sensor just kind of slid out, and I could use it just like that. The first thing I had to do with the mouse's microcontroller that runs the firmware was talk to the 3360 sensor over SPI and upload the sensor's SROM. The SROM is copyrighted and PixArt doesn't publish it, but you can extract it from a commercial mouse with a Raspberry Pi Pico and some bit banging code, eavesdropping on the commercial mouse's SROM upload. I have a link with the code to do that in the description. The 3360 actually has some interesting features like frame capture, but for a mouse, all you have to do is read the motion information and configure the DPI and stuff like that, and it's pretty straightforward code. I actually worked with a similar sensor before, like 5 or 10 years ago on someone else's project, so this was familiar territory. How about the case? I already know Blender, and I didn't feel like learning CAD software, so I just made it in Blender and bought a cheap 3D printer. It was really fun to learn how to use, and if you have any disposable income, buying something similar is a good self-investment. Here's some of the design stages I went through and what they look like. Uh, oops, I printed the top for this one upside down. Uh, I ended up removing the front top ridge of the shell because there was no space to connect it to the bottom with anything. The low poly surface feels fine, but I smoothed it out anyway with a subdivision surface modifier. For the side buttons, I couldn't mount them to the side of the case for 3D printing reasons, but I came up with a design where these little bendy things hook around the switch casing and the bottom of the PCB to stay secure, and you just kind of bend them with your thumb, and a bumper hits the switch's plunger. It looks really stupid and seems like a really bad idea, but it actually really works really well. On the electronic side, the first two versions used ESP32s. I tried using the RISC-V-based ESP32C3, but it doesn't support HID-USB, so that was out. The ESP32S2 worked, but was a lot bigger and filled up the case. The first version was on perfboard, and it was an absolute nightmare to solder together. Fun fact, at this point I hadn't figured out how to salvage the sensor with hot air, so I just clipped the pins and stuck it to the bottom of the shell with everything else suspended above it and connected with loose wires. That was a nightmare. The USB port was in a bad place too, but the esp 32 
exposes the USB data wires as pins, so I could use those instead. The switches have diodes on them because I hook them up in a matrix instead of directly. They're not technically needed, but they keep the mouse working if a switch gets completely shorted on the inside. In the second version, I designed a PCB in KiCad and got it printed by JLC PCB, the sponsor of- Just kidding, they have no idea I exist. The second version worked, but the next day, I noticed a problem with the ESP32's USB support, where it just never woke up after I put my computer to sleep. I had to unplug it and plug it back in every time I woke my computer up. I struggled with this for days and just wrote it off as a support library problem, gave up. For the third version, this was just not going to work, so I started looking for other microcontroller platforms. I like the Teensy a lot, but the cheap versions literally just don't exist anymore. The main Teensy now is $30. That works for some projects, but not for this one. I decided to use the Raspberry Pi Pico and rewrote the firmware for it. By the way, the microcontroller on this thing is insane. It's an ARM Cortex M0 Plus with a custom coprocessor called a PIO for a bit banging code that runs in parallel with the main CPU instead of having to waste CPU cycles on bit banging. It's called the RP2040 and it's amazing and I can't wait for whatever the next design is. But the Pico has the same problem with the USB port being in a bad place as the ESP32. But unlike the ESP32, it doesn't expose pins for the USB data wires, only test pads, which would have worked if they were on the top, but they were on the bottom. So instead of using the Pico itself, I redesigned the entire board with the individual components of the Pico on it, basically making my own Pico. Thankfully, they have a really well-written PDF explaining all the hardware design pitfalls of the RP2040, even weird stuff like power decoupling capacitor placement. And JLC PCB supports manufacturing with a pick-and-place machine, basically putting all the surface mount components down for you instead of you having to do it yourself. This is an incredible lifesaver, and I really can't understand why we don't have a service like this over here. It could cost two times as much, and I would be totally fine with that. After putting in my order and waiting a couple weeks, I got five copies of my PCB and, oops, I put in one of the resistor values wrong, so the sensor's LED can't turn on and I can't get any motion data. I wasn't gonna put the order back in with the right value and wait another two weeks, so I decided to desolder the bad resistor and bodge on some discrete resistors to get it working. And then my mouse was done, finally. This is all completely open source, including the hardware design files and the 3D models, and there's going to be a step-by-step -step guide all linked in the description. If you're interested, please check it out.